we go. We're into the ramble now. Oh, God, we're here. <laughs> we're here. We're here. So if you're on the audio podcast, you're getting this all into one giant. This is just for you. Giant link. And here's where the it's, fun comes in. It's a in. secret to everybody. Here's, here's, where we, here's where we talk about everything else. We can give some further thoughts on this series. Bro. I don't think we really have to give many further thoughts on this series. You can go check out the, the bigger podcast of yeah. this, if you will, the three episode breakdown. I feel like we nailed it. But let's, yeah. I do want to. Can we start with a new segment? Yeah, man. Let's bust out a new segment. What is this new segment? Beep, 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 it's beep, anime beep, beep, news, beep, breaking beep, reports. Beep, Actually, mostly stuff from a week ago, but we didn't talk about it last week. So here yeah. we are. I uh, got a couple news stories I wanted to break down, like cool stuff in the anime headlines yeah. dealing with animes and, and there whatnot. Is, there is some crazy stuff going on. Yeah. Uh, m- you a actually lot of this, brought a couple you, of things up to me that I didn't know about. A lot of this y'all might already be aware of because some of it did come out like last week and also we're recording this putting out tomorrow so you can just read. But let's talk about some stuff. Uh, first and foremost, I want to bring this one up. Hey, hey, Roger. Mm-hmm. Tell Shinji to get in the fucking robot. Get in the goddamn robot, Shinji. <laughs> Evangelion stop crying all the time. Evangelion is coming to Netflix, y'all. Uh, the full series plus the movies, Death and Rebirth and End of Ava. Uh, some big stuff. It's pretty rad because that is a series that, unless you were willing to go out and shell out the money for the, the platinum collection, pretty much. Yeah, and it is. Hard. I guess you can get the the individual DVDs. It I don't is, know which one's more expensive, but yes, they're all expensive. It is not easy to watch legally. Um, yeah, and obviously, like you know, if you're a fan, you want to support these things legally so that you can you know you right. can support them, i do have my platinum collection up you there. do indeed and i do have uh death and rebirth and i do have the end of evangelion and my, all three rebuild movies my dude's a real and on boy. blu-ray <laughs> i mean isn't the last one coming out in like two years 2020 uh, right yeah it's it's supposed to be coming out so it should have come out two years ago oof, oof. i've been waiting dude i've been sweating that for the 4.0 or 4.44 whatever they're yeah, gonna man. call that i, I think i think the la- the last i saw was 3.0 plus 1.0 <laughs> Yeah, Which it's something like, like that. Come, like, on. come on. Hey, they're having a good time. But let's talk about this. Uh, pretty cool. I will say right now, go ahead and shred up my anime fan club card. I've seen the show mm-hmm. once. Okay. I don't remember a lot of it. I've never watched those movies. Okay, well, the movie, the the uh, Death and Rebirth. I got to the end. Those, Everybody was clapping. I was like, come much, on, man. Uh, those are kind of... I guess a, a retelling, not really a retelling. What am I looking but, for? A re a recap, almost. But End of Evangelion does, that's where the shit goes That replaces down. the last three episodes or yeah. so. Yeah. See, I, I, I've never, it's I've never seen any new I know moments for him. We've talked about one in particular, the hilarious bit. He's yeah. so fucked up. But I've never actually seen him. Um, so for me, this is going to be pretty good because I'm going to actually. Yeah, and to it's watch really good for fans because, you know, I think it really opens a window up for a bunch of newer people that haven't got to see it. And like Absolutely. you said, it's not easy to get. Absolutely. And I don't care if it devalues my sets and stuff up there. I know that I have a, a good bit of money in that platinum set and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I don't care. I would and you're, pref- you're I would never prefer- going to get rid of it either. No, I'm not going to get rid of it. That doesn't matter to me at all. But, you know, if I wore, you know, like I could pay, if I got rid of all those, I could pay a good chunk of my, my mortgage off for that Oh, boy. Um, but we do need to talk about this because, as with anything, you can't just not, have not that Not a whole news. mortgage, just for a, the month. Just a chunk. Just it, for the month. <laughs> but we got to talk about this, though. We got to talk about this because you can't just have... Some good news, like Evangelion's going to be on yeah, Netflix. Yeah, this. No, I didn't know about this part. So there are rumors, and according to at least one of the original voice actors of the series, that's right, it's Ray. It's more than a rumor. Netflix is apparently going to redub it. No, you don't want it. No, I don't want it. No, you don't want it. I don't give a damn. All right, they they should. I don't want them to touch what's already been done. Fair enough. There is uh, there is some outrage over it. A lot of some of it is actually stemming from the voice actors themselves. I want to read a tweet uh, from Amanda Wynn Lee, uh, uh, who who of course w- worked on the original series. I believe was the voice of Ray, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Let me get the, um, me get the dub pulled up. But uh, she had this to say. Uh, at Netflix, I co-directed the Evangelion series, and I wrote, directed, and produced Death and Rebirth and End of Ava. I know every single frame. Please, please, in all caps, let me know if you have any questions. It's important to get it right, or the flans- fans will slaughter you. Trust me. A word of warning, perhaps, from someone who's in the business and knows this stuff. Dude, and I mean, this anime has a huge backing. Yeah. Its following is 
big. Like and you thought it was you thought it was bad when they fucking put made Scarlett Johansson the major. Oh Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Hell have no fury like the weeps. Oh boy. This it it could go bad. You know, like I have I have the original sitting on my shelf right up there. Now I want to know this, Roger, but are you telling me that if if it, if if it's true, if it if all that's true and they redub it, you're not gonna watch an episode? Oh, I'll check it out. It's, okay. You know, if they if they kept most of the original cast, it's like when they they did Kai for Dragon Ball Z. Sure. And they cut out all the filler and all the bullshit. Mm. And you know, there were a few voice actors they couldn't get anymore, but all of the main ones were there. Mm-hmm. It wasn't bad, in my opinion. I know a lot of people were still upset about it, but in my opinion, it wasn't bad. But if you go changing Shinji and you go changing Asuka mm. and you go changing Ray, you know, if 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 she's writing out about, you know, if she voiced one of the characters and she's asking, hey, can I please assist on this? That tells me that they're going to change major things. Yeah. Major it's, voices. It's kind of terrifying. You know, if, it, if it's very, very side characters or maybe a couple of the students here and there that appear in a couple episodes, that ain't no big deal to me. Yeah. But it's your like major, friends. major stuff. You're never going to get... I feel like that dub was done very well. Sure. Especially for the time. And you're never going to get that feeling back. So, I, I mean, I'll throw my two cents out there. I'll be honest, man. Again, I don't have as strong right. a connection to this show. And I understand that totally. So, for me personally, I don't think I don't think a, a new dub would bother me as much. The fact, though, the idea of them as, as our, our same person there... Uh, Miss Miss Amber Wynn Lee put it uh, first Battle Angel now. Yeah, Amanda Wynn Lee was she was she was uh, Ray. She was Ray. Now she they says, did. Uh, 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 Brina Plincia did redo her in the rebuilds. Okay. Now I was okay with that on account of this is supposed to be an entire. You know they were redoing the whole thing almost. Sure. But um, as as she put in another tweet, she says, first Battle Angel, now Battle Angel, now Evangelion. It's like I'm being erased from everything I ever cared about and poured my heart into." Hashtag original cast. Hashtag Netflix. So I mean, if that's the case, if it's if it is, like I don't. I feel like if if it is in fact that like these people who were these voice actors, to be fair, they uh, want it so bad, and like actually other ones are saying like, "Hey." I've I've actually seen another tweet from I believe it was Shinji's voice actor mm-hmm. saying, "Yo, Netflix, I, if you're gonna do this, let us do it. Like, you know, help us out, blah, blah." I mean, I don't see what the harm in is letting them do it, but right. I don't well, know. Well, here's here's one thing that I'm looking at now. I'm looking at the wiki page for the voice voice actors for the English, and all the rebuild movies. Uh, Shinji is still Spike Spencer. Mm-hmm. Uh, Katsuragi is Allison Keith. Mm-hmm. Asuka is Tiffany Grant. They're all the same, except for Ray. Ray was the only one that was switched. In the rebuild? Yeah, but Ray What's has the rebuild? that very... That's the new movies? Yeah, the rebuild. Okay. Right. Um, Ray does have a very meek voice, and it's sure. very... I feel like that it... I thought that uh, Brandon Plincia did a fine job of it. I don't know. I could still feel... I I feel it from her angle, too, because I don't think that she did a bad job or anything yeah. at all. Nothing that warrants being replaced in the, you know, when you could just directly drop it into Netflix. Yeah, man. It's, Why would uh, you spend the money to to do something that's already done well? Yeah. I don't know. I think the only reason I could see for it is, and I've, I've seen people floating this online, is that if they're going to do that, um, like, it's one thing to try and appease the hardcore fans. It is completely another, because this is not... It's, yeah, let's 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 call it what it is, man. Uh, Neon Genesis was two thousand four. No, it was before that, wasn't it? Oh, Neon Genesis was much it was like earlier. ninety something. So this is a this is at this point, it's an old show. Neon Genesis original run was nineteen ninety five to nineteen ninety six. Yeah, there are people like in bars drinking right now. Who who haven't seen who were born after this and don't Death give a and shit. Death and Rebirth and the End of Evangelion were 1997. So the thing is, like, if they're gonna try to reach like new fans and whatnot, then as as some people were pointing out, well, it would it, it if they were gonna do that, getting like bigger names to be the voices and whatnot, that certainly could affect. I things. don't think you can change like Spike Spencer. I don't think you can change him. He yeah. is a big name in his own right. Sure. He's done lots of things. And um I mean, I'm talking like 
like when Gi- when they do a dub of a Ghibli movie, they get like I, I don't think Netflix is getting fucking Matt Damon yeah, to no, voice. No, I, I don't. Gendo, I don't think they're gonna but, get uh, Christian Bell, you know, or anything like that. That would be some shit, though, wouldn't it? What are they gonna get Michael Sarah to do, Shinji? Getting the robot, Shinji. You okay with that? You okay with Michael Sarah, Shinji? You know what? <laughs> now that you mention it, I'm not okay with that. <laughs> but that would be amazing. <laughs> That's kind of my my uh, you know uh, I I just don't want to get in the robot. Dad. My attached <laughs> nature to things, I attach myself to it. Listen, I attach like, myself to stuff too well, and that's not fair of me entirely. I can say no. I cannot watch it. I can watch the real thing up there, and if I were to but suggest, what if, but what if you saw Gendo, those white gloves, those shiny ass glasses poking over them, and he's like, Shinji, get in the robot. <laughs> I would die, dude. <laughs> I think oh, it's Sean God. Connery. Is that? <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> God, he hasn't done anything since League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. That's a giant bummer. Anyway, well, yeah, that's that's the that's the Netflix news for that one. I do have one other Netflix story I want to talk about. Yeah, you knew go about ahead. This Let's one. get into this. Uh, live action Cowboy Bebop. Live action Cowboy Bebop. Ten episodes. No. It's weird because, you know, I let the Neon Genesis thing get to me so much, but this doesn't bother me at all. I'm kind of into it. I kind of really want to see what they do. I I might check out an episode or so, Mm. but I know that this I have no attachment to. If I I have an attachment to Cowboy Bebop, if they did a live action Neon Genesis, I would probably check it out just to see, but I have no attachment to that. So it doesn't bother me that they're doing it. So do you not have any other feelings, though? You're not hyped. You're not whatever. You're just kind of whatever about it. I'm right in the middle. I'm I'm open-minded. I would say I'm not optimistic. You're saying you're anime about it? Yeah, I would say that I, you know, certainly feel along with everybody else that it's probably going to be trash. But Eh, I don't know, man. They have the original director, like, attached as a consultant. Right, Um, but... There's a lot of talk about like how this is gonna be. I've that's seen gonna be so many things from anime come to live action, and it's almost always trash. Well, and I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm definitely gonna I, watch the uh, ten yeah, episodes. Yeah, I'm not saying that I won't give it a um, shot, but I, I I have an open mind to it. Because here's the thing: is like they've been talking. I've seen rumors and rumors of rumors about a live action Cowboy Bebop Forever. for years, years and years. At one point, I remember seeing a thing that was like live action Cowboy Bebop, fucking Keanu Reeves is Spike, and I was yeah. like, "There's no way." And then I saw John Wick, and I nutted. So yeah, let's make it happen. But I'm down for pretty much whatever with I this will one. Check it out. The but... only thing I need, and I have not seen confirmation. Like we talk about. We got we got homeboy uh, the, the director coming on to you know as a consultant. We got this guy, that guy, these people, that people. I ain't seen Yoko Kano's name in here yet. If I don't have her in them seatbelts, I might riot. Cause the music, mm-hmm. the mu- like we talked about it with Made in Abyss, talk about it with video games and whatnot. That music is what made it go from an extraordinary anime to a masterpiece for me. Right. You can't fuck with it. But uh, even the you know like the intros and outros that dude they're so iconic. It's, it's iconic. It's it's yeah. It's absolutely and it's that's that's huge. kind of the, the 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 dilemma with these live action redos that they do is because these are very iconic properties. Yeah, and people like I do with Neon Genesis, they attach themselves to that. Yeah, people are rioting over the very idea of this. But I gotta say, like the very aspect of it, if nothing else, I'm gonna get some new merch. I'll buy a new Cowboy Bebop shirt. Yeah. Get yeah, that cool and it, like logo. I said, like that's what I'm was all I was trying to say give earlier. Me, give me, give me a sweet windbreaker with that it, big ass logo on the back. Hell yeah! If I watch it and it sucks, then it won't bother me that it sucked because I have the real thing. Yeah, I have, I have the original material. I, I don't mind that they try, they they try something like this. It doesn't bother me. It's the like idea Death Note. Of, Everybody hated Death Note, but it didn't bother me that any you know. I didn't I thought watch Death it. Note, I watch it. Death Note was a fine anime, but it didn't bother me that they did it or anything. Sure. Um. Yeah, to some it is sacrilege, but to yeah. Roger it is Tuesday. Yeah, <laughs> it's whatever. It's whatever. It doesn't. It's not. It's like with Neon Genesis. Keep going back to it, but you know, taking away that original voice cast that I heard from that original mm. original show. That's that's taking something away. This takes nothing away. Yeah, this is just its own little addition. It's a little tumor off to the side. Wow. And maybe maybe it's a good tumor. <laughs> Maybe maybe it's not a sweet what a, tumor, bro. What a, a malignant tumor, dude. It's not one of those. Oh my Christ! It's benign. Oh my sweet mercy! All right, it's a benign live action tumor. Hey, maybe maybe it presses something in your brain and oh, something no. really 
really profound. Oh, happens. is this phenomenon? Are you yeah. are you John Travolta? Yeah, man. You I'm gonna start watch, spinning the sunglasses you know, you on know the table. You know that me and Kat have been watching House for oh months, dude. Oh my lord! All I've right. seen so much about tumors. Uh, <laughs> one last piece of anime news, just because I read this thing and I thought, oh, that's interesting. Because we can't just talk about Netflix. We got to talk about the other major stream, the other mainstream. Uh-huh. Ba-ba, See what ba-ba, I did there? Ba-ba, Mainstream. Uh, Hulu has signed an exclusive deal with Funimation. They're going to be getting all of the uh, the new stuff as they're airing in Japan. They will be on Hulu. Dubs and su- uh, subs, uh, subs and dubs as they become available. Uh, it's happening. That's a that's a huge deal. Notably, of course, your MHAs, your uh, right. your uh, Attack it's, on Titans. What it's sounding like is everything that Verve had is now just going to move to Hulu. Sure. Now I don't know if they'll have as many properties. And they 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 are definitely going in on it, man. I read a thing that was talking about how uh, big numbers from last year, like anime, had there was huge sales and subscriptions and all this stuff. It's like an all time high for like mm-hmm. anime as a medium, as a as an as a form of you know entertainment. And so it makes sense that Hulu and Netflix are going all the fuck in on them, right? Uh, it's huge and, stuff. And I mean, Funimation got bought by Sony, and you know Sony is gonna they're gonna push that shit to the moon if they yeah, can. It's gonna be massive. And and it makes sense, you know. If you could if you could choose between having the the exclusivity of doing your mm-hmm. simul dubs and stuff like that, and getting your episodes out one day, and and having some sort of partnership, would you want to do it with Crunchyroll, or would you want to do it with Hulu? Hulu's huge, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know anybody who doesn't at least know what Hulu I don't, is. I don't know tons of people that, that have Verve. Yeah. I know most of my good buddies do. Yeah. You do. I do. We I told love you Verve. about it. <laughs> yeah. And I was I was bummed uh, whenever Funimation left, but from a business standpoint, I can see. Yeah. You know, it's like, hey, let's get this on Hulu. That's that a good move. Everybody has. Yeah, man. I mean, I can probably drop the Funimation subscription. We were talking yeah, about that. Yeah. That app is awful, dude. <laughs> On the on the console, it's not it's not terrible on the phone. Yeah, but let me tell you about how many times that I'm like, you know what? I think I got my 4K TV sitting you right here. You can cast. I got to all your, my settings out the house. You can cast like it them. to your TV. Don't pretend like you can't. I want to drain my phone battery. Oh, you're a weakling. Uh, I lied. One more piece of anime news. Let's get to this one because I just read it a moment ago. Uh, Netflix still doing more shit like i said they're going all in on it yeah new series of uh ghost in the shell going to netflix uh oh yeah yeah i forgot uh, you told me about that right before we started yeah that's I kind of exciting too ago. i'm pretty psyched we got that sack dude yeah it's apparently the title is let me look this up to make sure i'm saying it right it's sac i think 20 standalone complex uh, standalone complex yeah brush uh, 2049 on the 64 it was a great game wow wasn't it was it also blade runner 2049 Is that the last blade runner What's up with 2049? I don't know. Good year. It used to be like everything was like in the year 2000 or something. Now we're going to 2049, I, I suppose. Maybe there's uh, just a lot of information out there for 2049 that it's getting us prepped for something. Something crazy. Oh, God. But yeah, it is. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to take my hat off now. Why you, you and your tinfoil hat. Uh, yes. SA, sorry. 2045. Ha ha. I was wrong. Damn. Ah, uh, it was a few years off. But yes, Ghost in the Shell, SAC 2045, or perhaps SAC 2045, obviously stands for Standalone Complex. It is uh, the director of Standalone Complex, uh, and uh, let's see, yeah, Standalone Complex is Kenji Kamiyama and Apple Seeds Shinji Aramaki, what, uh, are going to be in on this. It's uh, It's big news. Hey man, all I say is just give me some tachikomas. You want them tachikomas? Yeah, they did the they did the kind of like rebuild s thing for Ghost in the Shell. One no tachikomas. Yeah, I didn't. There were tanks and stuff, but they weren't that. They weren't. I only they did do those new movies couple. and I, yeah, you're That's talking about I'm the talking movies, about. Yeah, rides and stuff. Like I like that. started watching one and the art style was too different and I couldn't it was, get into it. It was they were okay. The the couple that I watched were okay, but there were no tachikomas. I gotta say, I. I need to rewatch Ghost in the Shell. I remember that. I remember liking that show a lot. Oh, I love it. Like the movie, I have. I actually own the movie on VHS, oddly enough. But I did. Uh, I remember watching Standalone Complex and Second Gig and all those, and and being like, man, this is pretty cool. But a lot of it, it felt really heady. Like they get into a lot of like existential stuff with like you know what is the show. I always felt machine, like they. Blah, you know, blah. I'm very easy to get lost in something, but I always felt like they pulled it around enough. And sometimes it just takes a little bit for them to really explain it. Sometimes they leave it open for a reason. Yeah. They leave you confused for a reason. That, the thing but about that show... they close their ends very well, yeah. I felt like. Yeah, I'm with you there. But like the thing about that show is like the action scenes were 
fucking incredible. They sure were. There was a, there was so many bits where they're just sitting there talking about stuff, and I I'm like I don't know what's happening. But I feel like if I watch it now, I'll I'll have a you'll you'll, mind you'll about follow it, it man. Yeah. It's it's good. But that's uh, uh that's our anime news. But um bum and we got through it. Yeah, and well we also got a little piece of kind of video game, kind of anime news too. What's are you uh, talking about the I, I I did want to talk about the Smash thing. I do want to mention something else while we're talking about Netflix. Uh Baki is supposed to be coming here this month in December Ooh. of 2018. Baki so, the Grappler? Is yeah. That that so is? if you're familiar with Baki the Grappler or you want to watch a really kick-ass tournament anime now, I haven't seen this this remake of it yet, but uh, all sources point to it being pretty dope. Yeah. Uh, these guys have muscles on their muscles, muscles, muscles. I feel uh, like JoJo's got JoJo ate JoJo. Yeah. They get, they, they get ridiculous. <laughs> the guy they from like, Fist, of the, Fist of the North Star ate JoJo. Yeah. In this anime, <laughs> dude, uh, there are characters that flex and it looks like they have a demon's face on their back. What in the hell are you talking it's about? It's crazy, dude. This sounds outrageous. Um, but that is coming to America this month, so... All right, stay on the look for that. Sounds hot. I remember. I think I told you about there was, <laughs> there was a uh, Twitter account uh, that was like an official thing where they had like it was called Hanabaki and it was clips from Hanabato versus Baki. Oh my god, dude, that sounds incredible. <laughs> it was really rad. It was like who had the who had the uh, best like bad guy monologue this week and it like showed two. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. And it's just like this this small girl holding a holding a badminton racket like talking and there's like this giant dude like like <laughs> it's fucking great. Anyway, it's perfect. Yeah, but, sounds sounds rad. Yeah, and then the DLC for the first DLC character for Smash got announced. Smash oh Ultimate. Boy. We did do a live stream of that last night. Last night. Last night. So, yeah, last night. <laughs> we did. We had a lot of laughs. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, man. I got um, I got some good spikes in. Yeah. Whoop a little ass. You whooped a little ass. I sucked a little D. <laughs> but only a little. I, I am not very good at that game yet. But I'm thinking about picking it up after we finish this. So we'll Roger, see what happens. Roger, don't um, hurt yourself. Uh, so the DLC is Joker from Persona 5. Now you'll know him as the main character from Persona 5 if you played the PS4 game or it was on PS3 as well. But also, there's an anime for it. So yeah. So that kind of fits it's in a here. a little halfsy. Yeah. A little half and half. So, uh, yeah, kind of cool. Yeah, kinda cool. I, I just thought it was neat. Yeah, I don't really have an opinion on this. I didn't play those games. I haven't seen that show. I don't know jack nor shit about it. it that just, game is so stylish, dude. It is well, so yeah, freaking I've, I've stylish. I've seen a lot of clips of it. I've seen like a lot of art of that character and whatnot. And I'm just like, man, it looks cool, but also I just don't. It came out know. of left field, really. Like, yeah, it's pretty. It feels very random. We were talking a little earlier, and like, we were if saying, if there's ever a chance for Goku to be in this game, here it's it is. basically confirmed now. Yeah. <laughs> We'll see. We got four more DLC to go, but it's not. I Persona's that was not even neat. on the Switch. You know what is fucking Xenoverse Two and Fighters. Sure is. It sure is. What if? What if it's not Goku? What if they like show Goku and then he gets blasted by Vegeta and it's Vegeta? <laughs> I'd take it. Yeah, I'd take it. So, um, well, dude, I, that's all the all the news we have, really. But I do want to ask you one very special question. What's that, my for dude? For the first time at the end of this oh, no. podcast, <gasps> my guy, what have you been watching? You know, not a whole hell of a lot. Pretty much, uh, I <laughs> I can't lie, man. Uh, the last couple days, I've been all about that Smash Bros. Dude, I'm about to be all about that Smash Bros. And uh, the days preceding that, I finally picked up God of War, and I've been playing the hell out of that. Here it's good. It's very good. I'm enjoying it. But uh, you know what I did make time for was uh, uh, Bloom Into You, another episode of that sure. one. I just I'm I'm gonna stop mentioning it now because every every week it's the same thing. I really like it. Really want to see what happens. It's good stuff. Uh, and I did watch another episode or two of um, uh, what you who's it? What you, what you who's it? Uh, Zombie Land Saga, mm-hmm. which I'm seeing I'm seeing more and more people talk about that online. It's very popular. We might have to do more talk yeah. more about that. But that's a that's a fun show. Um, some fun stuff. I don't have a whole hell of a lot to say about them, cause. I didn't. I didn't watch a whole lot else. What have you been watching, my guy? Dude, I finished off a, a full anime, and Ooh. I have started another one. Tell me about it, stud. Now, after we finished recording last week, it was hot in here. I stepped in. I thought about editing the episode, um, which was a mistake not doing, by the way, because the next Ooh, day boy. I had uh, our power kept going out oh. last Saturday, so I was like, I had the episode every time it was uploading, the power would. Can go out, dude, Yikes, and I would lose dude. our episode. That's a bummer. 
eventually I got it out. I got it out that afternoon, Saturday. And Sunday it was fine. I had that right on time. But um, I watched this anime called... Uh, and, and I don't even know if you can call it an anime. It's on High Dive. Okay. I think you would call it an anime. It's, it, you know, it's animated based from a manga. Mm-hmm. Uh, the style of it is all rotoscope. Are you familiar with that technique? I think that, yeah, this is the thing. I saw your, your, you had a video about here's the top whatever shows on high dive. Yes, I, I did make a video this week. I try to do a random video on Tuesdays. Yeah, I, I, I was watching. I was like, okay, he's practicing putting the clips on the videos. I, see. I am. It was but a little bit of that. I, I saw the first the first one. I didn't watch the whole thing. I saw the first show you talked about. I think this then must that's be what it. I'm about to talk about. Oh boy, that yeah, it is fully rotoscoped. It is creepy. It, it is. It ooh it it kind of it makes you very uneasy to watch. Please tell me about it. It makes you very uneasy to watch, dude, from start to finish. So I started it last, uh, after we finished, last Friday. Ran all the way I, through it? I, no, I went through six episodes. And, and then you, and then the you next laid day in bed shaking. I had to watch something to cleanse my palate before I went to went to sleep. I had to put on something cute. Uh, <laughs> like, this is this is so much. Okay, and Tell me I about have, it, bro. I have, uh, a, I wouldn't say I'm terribly anxious but i do have anxiety i've I've seen it in effect yeah and this show is just in it soaring but it was one of those things i i couldn't look away except for those parts that i put my hand over my face and i looked away waiting for this shit to be done okay so what this story follows is called what flowers of evil flowers of evil it is on high dives oh god the main character is a bookworm Okay. He's kind of standoffish. He's so there will be three main characters we get, and each one feels like a trope, mm-hmm. but they are so much more than that. Um, your your first main character, uh, Taco, he is he's like I said, he's a bookworm, and he's fascinated with weird books and old books, like old poems and stuff like that. His dad, I believe, his dad is maybe a writer, mm-hmm. uh, but his dad reads a lot too, and he's uh. He loves this book called Flowers of Evil by Baudelaire. Charles gotcha. Baudelaire, I think, is the guy's name. It is a real book. I gotcha. have not read it myself. The I don't know what the hell the book is about. It doesn't really explain too much of it. Actually, there is a big point where he explains his thoughts on the book, and I will not spoil that for anybody that watches. But he's kind of weird, and there is a girl that sits behind him, Nakamura. Mm-hmm. Nobody, everybody kind of, she's Nakamura. the creepy girl. Or, yeah. Knock. Arshinsuke. <laughs> she's creepy. Nobody wants anything to do with her. And then there is Taco's love interest, uh, uh, Sakia. Oh, wait, is it? It's Saki. Just Saki. S A E K I. Saki. Saki. Um, and she's typically, you know, she gets good grades. She's good at sports or whatever. She's that trope. And you know you got weird Nakamura behind him. Yeah, the the angry girl. Mm-hmm. He leaves his book in the class. He goes back to get his book, and Psyche's gym uniform just falls out onto the floor. Oh no! And he's like fighting back and forth with himself whether or not he wants to. So he's a horrible creep. He's kind of he's a little creep. They're in middle school. He's. A bit of a creep. Yeah, he's a bit of a creep, but I think does a lot he, of us wore. Does he snatch this person's clothes? He is sitting over the clothes debating whether or not... He's having an internal struggle in his mind whether or not it's worth taking He's just standing clothes. there sweating, looking at Yes, kind of. Oh, no. And he picks them... He hears a noise, and he freaks, and he stuffs them under his shirt, and he runs out with them. What a fucking... Okay. He feels awful at home about it. He feels terrible. He wants to. He wants to put them back the next day. He goes in and everybody's talking about a pervert that stole her clothes. Oh, God. So he decides not to put them back because he doesn't want to be named as a pervert. Even though he wants to apologize and stuff. Or at least he leads on that he wants to apologize. Mm-hmm. And he's biking home that day and he gets stopped by Nakamura. Mm-hmm. Nakamura was staying after school because she got in a... She called the the teacher a shit face. Heh. <laughs> In the middle of class. So she was there late because she was acting a fool. Yeah. She saw him take the clothes. Oh, no. 
she forces him into a contract with her in which what? in which she it's essentially you know it's I will blab to everybody that you stole the clothes unless you do all these things that I have you do you just listen to what I tell you to do and you do it the shit that she has him do is so fucking uncomfortable dude she is disturbed she is definitely disturbed and this is when we start getting our characters we can tell that Nakamura is on the verge of a psychotic breakdown good god um Takio is now with the stuff that she has him doing is mentally breaking down he's on the verge of a nervous breakdown mm. and then you get the love interest later on uh Saki mm-hmm. and whenever Saki. so it builds up seven moment or seven episodes for this moment that you know happened the very first the gym close incident mm-hmm Seventh episode in, we get some, we get something happen on that, and that's when she really gets introduced into the story, and it is very shocking of of the way that she takes it too. I don't okay. want to spoil too much about her because I, my mind, I was like, oh, some of the shit Nakamura has this poor kid do, and and the hardest thing about it is that I can see this happening in real life. Like this is all doable stuff. This mm. could plant an idea in somebody's head, and they could do this to somebody. Oh, no. Because it's not, you know, it's, it's you more gotta, mental you stuff. You gotta give an example. Like, what is one thing? She... I won't... I, okay, I'll give one example. Okay. One example, and I won't tell how it ends. Because how, it ends what in is a this, nightmare. What is it rated? <laughs> Uh, this show I would I would recommend for teens because it is a bit. But I mean is, this this thing you're about to tell me about is it a rated R situation? No. Okay, tell me about but it. But it's incredibly uncomfortable. He's going on a date with uh-huh. Saki. Okay. Takio goes on a date with Saki. Gotcha. Now this is before the whole spillover thing. Uh, this is before that moment in episode seven where gotcha. all that comes to to a head. Uh, this is leading up to it, and this is part of Nakamura's mind games. Mm-hmm. Um, he can't believe that, that this girl wants to go on a date with him. Sure. So Nakamura finds out she's kind of stalking behind and she knows that they're going on a date. She goes, Hey, I got an idea. I'm not going to stop your date or anything like that. I'm actually happy for you. Meet me 30 minutes before your date, uh, at the park and bring the gym clothes with you. And he's like, he, at first he objects to it, but he has no choice or she's going to, you know, like this is a crucial moment where she could ruin everything for him. You mm-hmm. know, he's finally feeling sure, pretty sure, good sure. about himself. He has this girl that he likes. Uh-huh. So he meets her at the park. He meets her at the park. She shoves him into the girl's restroom, pins him in the stall, and she tells him, do you have the gym clothes? And he pulls them out and hands them to her. She goes, now put these on under your clothes. Okay, I saw that coming. So he's he goes on this date wearing her gym clothes under him. That's fucked up. He has a very light shirt on, a very light white button up shirt, and some slacks, some light should've, slacks. Should have wore that beefy tee, bro. <clears throat> and the gym clothes have you know giant lettering on them, sure, with the names and everything. Now I'm not gonna say how those or if they get exposed or if they just you know they build the suspense to it. But that scene in particular is really like it's like almost sickening waiting for something to happen. Just the way they spin it, plus the rotoscope style really adds to the yeah, show. Yeah, like you're definitely you gotta you gotta like watch that video about the top five whatever. Yeah, uh, on high dive. On top high five dive. anime on high dive. Boy oh boy, just 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 watching those bits of it, it's. Fair, it's very disturbing because if you're not familiar with rotoscope, it's basically like you filmed a person, it's real life, and then you draw over it. Yeah, basically. essentially, yeah, you get you just imagine you have a pane of glass. Sure, you're looking out on a street, somebody's just standing on a street, and you draw, you the, trace those yeah. lines. Yeah, you just trace the lines. It's like a, it's like a realism minimal, minimalism. It's yeah. hard to, to really describe. And and the colors are like in the clips I saw looked fairly flat, and it's like no, not super. The, any humans, yeah. any humans on the show do not have a lick of shading on them. Yeah, it's very, it's it's fairly, dis, it's very disturbing. Yeah, and just the way that it's built and the way that it's written, I cannot recommend that. If you like things like that, I cannot recommend it enough. Now, if you are very anxious. And you don't like uncomfortable situations like that? Yeah. Uh-huh. Don't watch this. Yeah. Because there are, there are points where I like I think I'm going to be sick. Jesus. But 
I, I have enough about me that, that I knew, you know, I could have turned it off at any point, and I mm-hmm. didn't. I wanted to see more because I was very engrossed in the story that they were telling. Gotcha. And it's it's written very well. It has now been collected into three, uh, you can get three books here that have the whole, the whole manga. This only covers the very first of those three books. Oof. But there is resolution in this anime, mm-hmm. even though there's not a season after it. There, they do something so clever. The writer does something so clever that I was extremely impressed, and it gave enough closure that I was satisfied. And now I want those books. Mm-hmm. I want to read what happens to the rest of the story. I have I have looked a little bit into it. And spoiled a couple things here and there, but it wasn't enough to make me say, no, I don't want to read this, because that's how how pulled into this story that I was. Gotcha. And it's it's so it's so well done. Mm. I really if you can handle something like that, watch it. Just watch it. Sounds pretty rad. It's twelve episodes. Another thing that I want to mention is uh the outro music is the end credits is so weird. It's fucking random. Okay. It's strange, but the intros are broken apart into three episodes each. The first ah, episode it switches every three. The the first episode is uh, sung from the perspective of Taco. Ah, and then the, like the, the next second one, one, the lyrics change, and it's from the perspective of Nakamura. Okay. And, and then then we got Saki, mm-hmm. and then we have the I'm I'm assuming that it is the writer. Mm. The the creator of the the series, I'm assuming that, or it's from us as a viewer. That's wild. Yeah, the story as a whole, it is, it's good. Watch. All it. right, sounds pretty wild, man. And then I won't talk as much about this one. I, I kind of like having the uh, what have you been watching move down here because now I can really bramble about the shit that I watch. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> that I really want other people. I want people to watch that because now I have nobody to talk to about it. All right, I'll, I'll, de- I'll think I'm gonna have to check it out. Give it a check, dude. All right. Give it a check. I th- Corey has a VR set, and I'm trying to talk him into watching it on his VR. Jesus, <laughs> I don't think I could deal with that. Um, the other thing that I've been watching that I started tuning into is in 2008. I actually have the NES game. There's a GoGo 13 game. Uh-huh. He is essentially he's the the manga the Japanese James Bond. Oh no! Except he's not an agent. He's an assassin. Okay. And in 2008, they made a, a Golgo 13 anime. And it is so fucking awesome, dude. Yeah? Yeah. It's, is it so good? It's, dude, it's, it's, I can't really, like, I can't tell you that you're going to get a, a fucking amazing story out of it or something like that. Each episode is, there are 50 episodes, and each episode so far has been a one-shot episode. But it does this thing to where you're like, all right. They give you this ridiculous scenario, and Golgo. Have you ever seen what uh, Golgo Thirteen looks like? I have not. He's his face is he's super stone faced, dude. He's like he's huge, and his face is fucking blank. Uh, but he's like drawn almost like handsome, like he is a Bond s character. Yeah, I'm looking at him now on um, on Google. These scenarios, these stupid ass scenarios. These eyebrows, goodness. Yeah, they give you. You're like, it really gives that feeling like, you know, when somebody's trying to play a trick on you or something like that, or they're telling you that it's a magic trick and you want to know how it's done. You're like, all right, go ahead, give it to me. You do the little hand wave kind of waiting to figure out how this shit is done. That's what this show does. It really, it's, it's intriguing because it, it's so macho and it's just so, the way they write it is so ridiculous. It's ridiculous. That's what it is but it's good ridiculous all right it's cheese ridiculous dude and uh, this is definitely not for younger people because there are the boobies and the sex in here he looks and actually from what i understand there are some wieners in here too he looks like a short-haired actually like a younger fitter steven seagal (laughs) kind of yeah does it is the show how i'm picturing it where he's just an unstoppable badass who beats the shit out of everyone and fucks the girls. Kind of. Okay. But it's not like, okay, so... Go, uh, go that, 13, that's the, that's walks into a episode. building, 12 let me, assassins let me jump at you. him, he disarms and eviscerates all of them in one blow, <laughs> and then the bikini girl walks out, oh, my hero! Now we're gonna fuck. And then they do? 
let me tell you the how first... wrong am I, Roger? Uh, he actually doesn't have tons of sex. Okay, but that it shows. But if twelve dudes jumped out at once, he would get out of the scot free. He has like an honor honor about him. But too. would he just there murder everybody? There's definitely one girl would that they, was. Would they even get a lick in? Is my question. The bad guys. So far, nobody has got a single lick in. Yeah. Okay. So I, he's, I'm only he's, ten episodes. He's in. just an impervious badass. I'm is only what you're ten me. of fifty. Um. <laughs> oh no. The first episode, let me tell you what happens in this first episode. This is where I'm like, all right, I'll watch another one. And oh, I just God. kept doing this from there. The first episode sees him getting, uh, somebody's hijacking a plane. Mm. It sees him getting released from jail or prison. Okay. By the CIA and FBI, who both want to hire him to shoot, to snipe this hijacker. <laughs> he then... <laughs> Agrees to the job. They agree to pay him $3 million. Every single job, people are like, I'll give you $3 million to do this. Jesus. And I can't tell dude, every time it's $3 million, dude. This guy makes $3 million all the time. Um, he gets out of jail. They offer him the $3 million job. He says that he needs to go speak with his guy to get a special weapon. He tells the gunsmith, this dude that has one singular buck tooth right in the middle of his mouth, um, what he wants. The guy says, oh, it'll take, uh, it'll take a week to make this gun. And he says, he throws a stack of money down and he says, I have three hours. Hmm. Good God. So the guy is making the gun in three hours. In the, a in the special process, gun. Yes. The special sniper, sniper rifle to his, his liking or and whatever. He, which he... Is going to use to shoot a person in a moving plane? Uh, well, the plane is stalled at this the point. The plane is the stalled. CIA is it's like on the, plane. the tarmac it's on the or whatever. Okay. Um, but you it's know, on the, he's, on the he's gunpoint everybody, so he can't get the idea that there's somebody in shooting range. Mm-hmm. In this three hours, he gets a special gun. His gun is being made. He goes to this hotel. These mafiosos or something are telling him. They're, like, following him. He meets up with a girl. He bangs this girl. <laughs> and she is loving it, dude. Yeah, she is. She's loving it. Okay. Roger, for and God's then, sake. And then he finishes. He starts putting his clothes back he on. He finishes. I guess he's finished. He <laughs> it, uh, Actually, he's just laying there, stiff as a board, with that same stone face on. Oh, and no. she's just screaming away. And once all that's done, <laughs> she's still on the bed and like wondering if he's, you know, like, will we come later or something like that? She's trying to have him back because will, will he you come later because so well. he didn't finish. Actually. These guys bust in the door. These people that are telling him they bust in the door. He grabs the girl off the bed, tosses her into the bathroom, rolls inside the bed, shoots all these guys dead, puts on the rest of his clothes, leaves, gets in a mini jet, flies over to this place with his gun, with his fancy gun. It's three hour fans again. Right. And he takes a shot from two From the plane? Uh not from the plane. Okay. He gets off the plane. I really but wanted it to be from he's the plane. Two kilometers away is what they say. Jesus. They say a, a very good shooter, somebody that uh normally the CIA would hire, mm-hmm. could only make this shot from uh from a fourth of that distance. Yeah, five hundred, I was gonna yeah. guess. So he's two kilometers away. He shoots this guy in the head, walks back on the plane flies off that's the episode <laughs> Roger what I can't do I can't See, this begin is why to I, this is why I always took the notes <laughs> <laughs> and do just the situations that they put they put him in okay and you're like okay this is definitely more ridiculous than the last how, how are they gonna write this okay it just gets wilder and wilder. Yeah, dude, it's so it's so ridiculous, but it's so good because Golgo is he's so likable. Okay, he's that that stupid stone face about him, and you know his his catchphrase is "Don't stand behind me if you don't want to lose your life." <laughs> I don't. And there are moments where people walk up behind him and he just, just drops him, dude. <laughs> just, and it doesn't matter. He'll take a job from the CIA. The FBI, MI6, the, the NSA. mafia, <laughs> anybody, dude. He, they'll offer him $3 million and he's on the job. The WWE. There's an episode, dude. Okay, there's an episode 
where of course uh, there's a violin player and of course he's shredding a Stradivarius. <laughs> Bitch is shredding a Stradivarius. <laughs> and he's playing a song called Air on the G string. Yeah, that's a real song. Okay. Uh, this episode is called uh, Shoot on the G string, I think. Oh no. The guy in the episode, he's playing the Stradivarius, dude. Good his God. string breaks and people shame him because his string breaks in this beautiful concert. So his rival is coming to to play because he's kind of has this uh, crisis of confidence. So his rival is playing the show and he hires Golgo to get into a booth and just shoot the G string and break it <laughs> off of the guy's violin. Wait, is that is that how it happened? He pays him three million dollars. <laughs> three million dollars <laughs> to shoot a string on a violin. How many episodes? It's fifty. 50 episodes, so <laughs> by the end of it, he's going to have $150 million. <laughs> and and he takes the job, and he shoots the guy's G-string. <laughs> and then and then the guy proceeds to, this is great, because he shoots the guy's G-string, gets the $3 million, and the guy just switches and plays it on another string. He tightens up another string to the G and finishes the song on there. It's so fucking dumb, dude. I don't understand the show. I love it. <laughs> All right. Well, what is this um, on? Where, where'd you watch it's this? It's on High Dive. Okay. And there is a sub and a dub on it. Now, I will say that the animation is not great. It's passable, but it's not great. Okay. The intro and outro, though, at least the very first ones that I got, they fucking rock. Okay. They fucking rock, dude. All right, dude. You watching subs or dubs? I, I'm watching the dub of it. All right. Um, well, I, I might have to check out a couple episodes. You just watch a couple. It's it's definitely something that you could watch an episode of and be happy. Okay. You could watch that episode. You're like, I have 30 minutes to kill. Is there like an overarching thing? Can I just start in, in the middle? You Doesn't can matter. start in the middle as far as I know. All right. Oh, boy. All right. Well, That's GoGo13, and I've been enjoying it. All right. Well, Hopefully, I'll have a great story next week for it. That's what we've been watching. <laughs> Man, I like having this at the end, dude. <laughs> But uh, I oh, I do believe that is it for the episode. I think we man. made it, guys. Uh, that's that's what we've been watching. If you want to tell us what you've been watching, or you want to tell us anything at all, by all means, hit us up uh, the Good Buddies Anime Pod at gmail Of course, you can always send questions into us. Of course, questions and whatnot. Uh, we haven't really been doing the uh, the questions and answers thing. Like we usually get some questions and answer them and talk to discuss. But maybe we'll get some. Yeah. Um, but yeah, hit us up the Good Buddies Anime Pod at gmail You can also check us out on the Facebook group, the Good Buddies universe uh hit us up there join up uh you'll probably get approved unless you asshole none of y'all are assholes right not my good buddies i'll uh, approve you anyway wow and if you're an asshole i'll delete you all right uh you can also <laughs> check us out on the twitter page tgb underscore anime pod there's also the tumblr oh boy tumblr's fucking up lately but uh check that out it's uh the good buddies dot tumblr dot com uh, we also have uh, Rapid Kick Media, where you may be listening slash watching this, listening to slash watching this right now. That is a uh, Rapid Kick Media on YouTube, and as always, they do have different names. You'll be fine. Um, of course, you can listen to the podcast anywhere that fine podcasts are sold, even though we don't sell them. That's a uh, podcast addict is what I use. You also got Stitcher, you got iTunes, you got a Pod Bean, sweet little beans. But uh, check us out, hit us up. I think that's it for the media, so we're going to go into the music credits. Mm-hmm. Of course, of course. I want to give out a, a shout-out to my good buddies, Married with Sea Monsters, a.k.a. the Mary Janes, for use of our opening theme song, Paper Doll. Now, they are on Spotify, unlike us, but that song and so many other amazing tracks can only be found on marriedwithseamonsters.bandcamp.com. So hit them up, check it out. It's good stuff. We also want to give a shout-out to our good buddy, Petty Theft. That is how you pronounce it. Two P's at the beginning, two T's at the end, Papetti Theft. For the use of our closing theme song, which we are still calling A Sweet Anime mm-hmm. Dreams, which is probably starting up right about now. But check out Petty Theft on SoundCloud and Twitter, uh, Papetti Theft. But uh, that's about it for the show. Roger, you want to take us out or you want me to take us out? How are you, uh, you got anything? You got anything to take us out on? No. Okay, I'll take this out, man. All right. So from all of us here at the Good Buddy Universe, I'm your good buddy, Brandon. I am your good buddy, Roger. Shoot on the G string. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>